had one meeting with Anna Brown and um, she was kind of like, I, I've done so much like psychotherapy. <laughs> you have to go with different therapists and had to start and tell the whole story of you, my life, you know, sort of come in feeling like you have to tell a story. You have to tell a background. And when I started to kind of tell her what my search at all was like, she's just like, no, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was kind of, kind of like, Oh, darn. Well, it's like, had this prepared, but then again, <laughs> the relief to not have to kind of dredge so exhausting to try yeah, to tell yeah. the story again yeah. yeah so i guess like i've been um kind of very actively seeking for about only like six years considering my age but i kind of grew up as an atheist so i don't have like a i grew up like told just told there's no god there's nothing which in a way to me still feels closer to this message because it felt like i didn't have any ideas about what that is um, but then like, um, I had a, this is the story that I had a dog that was very ill, like he had cancer and he was like my soul dog sort of, you know, and I knew I was going to lose him and I didn't want, I wanted something to hold on to, you know, and I, I kind of was like trying to kind of figure like whatever he is must be kind of here already because I can feel it. I, I don't know if that's how to say. And I was trying to find out what that is. So he was, um, I, uh, after he passed away, there was kind of a feeling like he's, it was kind of like his, his, his kind of story kind of stopped. Like there was just a stop and it was, but it was, I don't know. It was like, kind of like, something that probably started me seeking along with the seeking in the months before his death like like what is he what is it that i really love what is it that kind of and i kind of came to this idea of like a loving presence and then i heard muji speaking about presence and i was like oh my god that's it and uh, it kind of like i kind of um kind of grew up in a religious area and kind of felt like left out of the whole idea of having like something else and kind of like oh that's what god is people might not know what that is but that's what it is so i went like four or five five years trying to really follow muji like like be all in you know and, and going for the highest and then like just i think i'd heard say I think I'd listened to Tony Parsons a tiny bit, like, and he just said something like, there's no awareness. And I was just like, that's stupid. <laughs> that's dumb. You know, that's ridiculous. Of course there's awareness. And I kind of just went back to Muji and I didn't really think about it, but I just got less and less. I kind of loved him to begin with for the first four years or so. And then it kind of just started to fade. And then I kind of, um, I, I, in the middle of last year, about this time, he had a retreat online and um, I, I just like started to think, I just started to feel like, wait a second, I don't even know what awareness is. Like, what the heck is awareness? Like, it seemed so clear before, like, like, no, I don't know that. And then, and then, you know, one of the questions that they, that school will always ask is, you know, or bring up, you know, that you are, you know, I am, that's the one thing, you know, and I was just like, no, <laughs> I don't, I just, I kind of like, I know that this is sort of, I know, I mean, it seems to be, but I don't know, I don't know that I am, I can't say that, it's not, they say, you know, oh, that's the most obvious thing, but it's not, <laughs> so um, I think I slowly started to get more open to the, this kind of message, I didn't understand it. I mean, of course I still don't, but, um, yeah, so it took, it's, it's, I mean, it's not, I don't feel like I've had any major kind of shifts except there were times like during when I was following Muji, like I was once at a retreat, a physical retreat. And like, I think it was 2017 and suddenly the sense of like someone in here vanished and there was just, he said something to someone like, let me he said something like you go away and let me just speak to the empty chair and i think a lot of people kind of went at that time like whoa there's nothing here and it was just what 
like it was just the room. And, it, and I kind of, I mean, there was still me there because I was like, whoa, what is this? You know, what? It was something, it was like the sense of presence disappeared, like the sense of what we'd been kind of told to hang on to, like, you know, feel this feeling of presence and point to the chest. It's like, wasn't there. There was just that. And it was, I guess at the time, like in the very moment of it, it was like, huh. But it was like, nothing it was kind of like in a way i can't say it was nothing special because it was very different but it was very unexpected it wasn't like what i you know because that presence was gone i don't know that might have been the beginning of the shaking of like what is that you know because then when the teachers would point you to i am you're like but that's not there but <laughs> or it doesn't have to be there <clears throat> so i do feel like it is you know it is there now but it, what it's attached to tends to be like fear like when I think, you know, when I, for probably the last year, whenever I've been kind of pointed to the sense of I am or presence, it just goes directly to the sense of sensation of fear, kind of. And um, so there's been a lot of fear of death, like physical death in the last year. Um, and like sureness that there's something wrong with me physically, you know, that I have cancer, that I have, you know, <laughs> I used to be a heavy not a heavy smoker, but I used to be a smoker for a while. And so I'm like, oh my God, I must have lung cancer. It feels weird. So it's kind of, um, you know, my lungs feel weird. <laughs> and, and there is like this. So, but I guess in the last couple of weeks, there's kind of been really a kind of belief, I guess. I don't know if you could say belief, but sense that I can't get this. Like this is at first it was like, no, I can't get this. But now it's like, I'm not going to get, this. <laughs> you know, it's now I kind of, there's kind of a less caring that I'm not going to get this. There's kind of like, and still people will say, well, it's already, you know, it's already happening. It's going to happen. You're going to drop away, you know, like, and I'm like, but I don't, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, there are times like, like in the last couple of days, I've been really afraid of the lung cancer thing or whatever is coming up. But, and then there is kind of wanting to plunge into non-duality or whatever, because like, oh, I can't be here if this happens. You know, I don't want to be here when this happens. If this happens, I don't want to be in, I want to be involved. <laughs> so yeah, they're still like wanting to escape, wanting to get out of it and, you know, not wanting to be here <laughs> yeah I, so. I totally understand about the health thing so yeah. this, this character also had a lot of health issues yeah and there was a wanting to escape it but yeah and it intensified the seeking at times a lot yeah um the thing is there's still health issues here so there's still i guess there's not as much worrying whatever happens is just going to happen so yeah there, there is no one here that's really wanting to prevent anything or really wanting to yeah change whatever is because um it's just is what it is and yeah. if the body dies the body dies obviously there's a preference to live and there's a wanting to have a healthy body that's not in pain obviously that's that's just the preference here yeah um so there will be eating healthy there will be going for walks there will be going to the doctor when necessary that's just what's happening um so this is not an escape this will yeah. not heal you the body is still going to be in pain if it's going to be in pain they're still yeah. going to be going to the doctor if it's needed is there less like coming up of like, uh, what's going to happen to me though? Like what's, you know, um, yeah, I guess that's the kind of thing that I want to escape from is, you know, that plotting ahead and what's, you know, just like the words lung cancer bring a fear with them. And even though like, I don't know what lung cancer really is. I mean, you see pictures that are even horrifying, seem horrifying, but it's basically almost because like if I'd never heard of anything, would I even know that those pictures were horrifying? <laughs> you know, if I hadn't been told it's horrifying, yeah. you know, it's like. The word cancer in general is so triggering because yeah. there was, a, there was um, potential for cancer here too. 
Wow. And um, that's something for years that was uh, causing immense suffering. This this yeah. thing called potential cancer in the future. Yeah, yeah. So that is still pre not, not present, but it's a possibility. So there is yeah. knowing. There's monitoring apparently yeah. happening. Um, and it, it just is what it is. Um, yeah, there, but so every apparent person is so different. So, how yeah. this person dealt with it was. If there's sickness, there's sickness. There is yeah. nothing that can be done except for the automatic whatever's happening, eating healthy and exercising. And but other than that, there is no saying. It it will unfold the way it's gonna unfold. Yeah. That that is a conceptual story that I just said, because it's just what's happening. There isn't there isn't a future and there isn't. Yeah. There isn't a better than or worse than it's just what it is. Um, so again, there can be fear if if the let's say the potential for cancer was very very real. Yeah. And there, there was a diagnosis. Right. Um, there there can still be probably a lot of fear here. Yeah. So. There's no real saying. I can't say anything for sure. I, I don't know how the character is going to react. Um, but there's a sense that there will be resistance. There will be yeah. possibly extra trying to eat more healthy or uh, going to other different professionals. Potentially, this, that's possible. Yeah. Putting everything into this, that could still happen. Or or it there could be a relative just this is this is what it is and i'm not there there might not be a wanting to stress about it too much yeah but that's also just what would be happening there's no one here like premeditating how the person should act in response to this the response yeah. happens the thoughts are just there the the fear or resistance is just there and that's just what's happening and yeah i have i mean i've heard of people that like I think Eckhart Tolle, who I never really listened to that much, but a little bit like told about one guy who was diagnosed with, I think he was, I don't know if he was on the path, on the path or not, but um, he was diagnosed with some terminal cancer. And, and it, in the doctor's office, he was like, woke up. He was just like, yay. For some reason, he was like, now I don't have to worry about anything because I know what's going to happen. And he was just like, I guess the rest of his life, he was just kind of you know, free because it didn't, he was just like, well, I mean, it wasn't something he expected, you know, it was just like, so yeah, in some ways it, it does seem like this is something I've been afraid of my whole life. You know, you've heard, I've heard like, there were kids that had cancer where I grew up. There were, so I knew it was possible even for a young, young person, like, and, you know, who died and, you know, it was something I, I can't imagine anyone had a nice introduction to that word, you know, that there is so, anybody that's like, oh, cancer's no big deal, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it was like, but it, it's been a lifelong kind of just fear without even knowing what it is, like without even knowing. Yeah, I'm sure there would be a ton, a lot of pain and a lot of, you know, sickness, but that's not really what's being feared. What's being feared, I guess, is the unknown and just the automatic response of, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I know even uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj, when he had was diagnosed with lung can or mouth cancer, throat cancer, whatever, he said his instant reaction was fear, the instant reaction that, but it, it didn't last long, I guess, but it was like instantly sort of, wow. <laughs> because mm. it is yeah. just kind of a response but yeah but there is like the feeling I need to kind of plan ahead or be prepared that's an old you know thing that's like yeah that that could still arise here too there really? could yeah. there could be a scene this potentially might cost more money so there could be 
that could still arise. That could still be like, oh, okay, I'll save extra um, because it's it's a possibility. Uh, so yeah, that that's not that's that that does seem like practical though. It's not like trying to mentally prepare yourself, like right, like I know I'm going to be really upset, so I have to face that right now. <laughs> kind of you know like I have to know how bad it's gonna be or I have to I don't know there's like trying to prepare mentally and yeah it is like suffering now for you know a possibility that it will never happen <laughs> and yeah uh, my doctor had told me he I could do a lung scan if I wanted because I was never a very heavy smoker and they usually don't really recommend it for people. Well, what I read is they don't recommend it. And so this weekend I have a choice. I could do a lung scan, but I don't want to face it. I don't want to, because if they find something, yeah, I'm like, if they find something, there's COVID out there. I don't want to have an operation. I have two dogs here that I don't have any plans for if anything happened to me. So like, I kind of just don't want to face it. So, and, and my doctor told me, don't go if you don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that can still arise here. So yeah, I think, I think what I'm trying to get across is that there's no difference. There's really not that wow. much difference. So it's not going to really save you from yeah, the worries yeah. and fears and like, wow. Okay. There's, there's already no <laughs> me there and all of yeah. that happening. <laughs> so okay. It's seen here too that there could be an avoidance of going to the doctor. So yeah. out of the fear, out of the conditioning, um, because that was a pattern in this person to yeah. want to avoid and want to see, can I heal myself first before I get tested? That was a condition yeah. that was uh, pretty strong Yeah, because the fear was a lot. So that is still here, it seems. That conditioning is still here. Um, and, and who knows if that will change? It might, it might not. There's no predicting anything. And yeah, already what's happening there is just what's happening. And yeah, me's not doing it. It's just what's happening. Yeah. So, yeah. So another thing that's happening is, I mean, yeah, being, being, you know, having listened to anybody like Muji and all those, like, is the whole thing is to not believe your thoughts, but there's kind of, that was, I always found that frustrating because it seems like there's nobody to not believe the thoughts. Like there's nobody here that can really separate from thoughts. You know, they always made it sound like people would say, oh yes, I'm able to separate from my thoughts and I'm able to just watch them. Well, I've never been able to do that. There is no, like I am, when they're there, I am them. They're, you know? <laughs> That's how it certainly seems. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I have said to people like, you know, like it does seem very clear that I, I think I'm my thoughts, but the one saying, I think I'm my thoughts is a thought. It's a, it is thinking. Well, and, and so, yes, it's right. I am a thought. <laughs> I don't know. It's also a sense. It can be a sense too. Uh, okay. it, it can be it can be both together or just a thought or just a, a sensation. It it seems it can vary, but usually, yeah. uh, I mean, over over here too, there can be subtle beliefs in the thought as well. That's not a problem. That's just what's happening. So I can't even say that with the me, there's a belief in the thought because that still arises here. It's more like, um, there's, there's purely just the thought and whether, whether it's a, a strong thought or a weak thought is just what's happening for no one. And it's, it's already the case there. So, but yeah, does it feel like it's clear in that moment that it's for no one, like when the thought is there or is it? Yeah, because it does seem like um yeah there can just be strong thoughts strong emotions that are full on just what they are and yeah i can't say it's identification it's just what's happening but 
you know, if if you if you say that for what's happening there, that's the same thing, in a sense. There's just strong thoughts or right. strong emotions. Yeah, and but yeah, it's just the idea that it's different. It's yeah. Yeah, I mean, there there can be a body sense of owning the strong thought or the strong emotion too. Yeah. Um, but I guess. I guess uh, there's a scene here that the the intensity of the thought and the emotion doesn't necessarily certain things weaken for sure, but there's still intense pain. There's still intense thoughts and disturbing thoughts. Um, yeah. So it's hard to say, you know. Certain things they do get lighter, but certain things still appear because apparently the conditioning is really strong maybe yeah yeah so a couple of days ago i was listening to somebody that at the very end of the talk they said something like um it's uh i don't know if you heard of nikosi um i love it know. do you okay so so uh, michael jeffries makes these playlists with like edited just him speaking I wish he'd do it without music because I have very bad attention. And I and I, I think that my 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 me self feels like I'm being trying to be hypnotized to sort of believe something. And I kind of just want it pure. Like I just want it, I, I'd like to be able to see him and just hear the words come out. But the end of it, he, he said something like, it's the whole universe asking that question. Like, and he doesn't usually always, you know, I mean that the universe is an idea, really. It's just a it's a concept, but it's kind of funny because I kind of used it and, you know, like me will do <laughs> to sort of, you know, it's not me. And it makes sense in a way. It makes sense in a story of a universe and evolution and that kind of thing that I'm not unique. All these feelings that I feel came from, you know, <laughs> the history. I mean, I'm not unique in that way that came from the unfolding of a universe. And so like, I guess I'll just worry about kind of for a what for a day it probably felt like just to feel like I'm the whole universe experiencing this, you know, not just a single person. For somehow that was felt very freeing. Yeah, but then yeah. like by the next day, it's like that that always happens when there's something like that, you know, just like, oh, oh wow, that's cool. But then, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really last. It's not a cure. It's not a it's not a me cure, but yeah. it was kind of just nice for a day. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. interesting that within the me sense, so many different experiences and ways of detaching, ways yeah. of dealing with things, maintaining certain things. It it appears very real. It it appears the experience is it feels very real that that experience is actually happening to the me. The me is doing something or creating a certain state or yeah. experiencing something. Um, yeah. And I just, even if it doesn't seem that it came from me, it kind of slowly morphs over to what did I do that made that happen? You know, usually when it starts, it's like not, I did it. But yeah, it does move over to what did I do? Right. Yeah, that's an, another thing about the fear like of lung cancer is the feeling that I smoked, I did it. You know, like this blame, like I did it. Mm. And it is, it is funny because all the time that I smoked, I did not, there was a feeling like, I don't want to do this. Like I'm killing myself, but <laughs> like, you know, and it's like, who is doing, like, why is this happening? Why am I doing this? Why can't I stop? You know, I would. And for so, but then there is, and that's a tendency to blame people that, you know, that, that do smoke or whatever they do that's bad for their actions when they really feel like they had no control. There was right. no feeling like I can do this differently. I can stop doing this, but it was just, just, but there is like, I think that sense of blame, like, that's such a good point. Big part of it. Yeah. That, that is, um, that can create more suffering. Yeah. It's such a good point because for here to the person blamed herself for her sickness, blamed herself for, I did this and therefore this happened. Yeah. Um, 
So there was immense suffering just because of that, not really the sickness itself. Yeah. The, the fear of the sickness, but it was the suffering was mostly it was my fault. Yeah. And I could have prevented it. But now I guess the seeing is like that was just what was happening. The the body and the brain was programmed and conditioned a certain way. And addiction is um it's part of the the programming of the body and it's yeah. not controlled by the me it's um just what's happening and yeah. the me did not do it the thought that i shouldn't be doing this that's not that's also just what's happening yeah um the resistance toward it but the but the needing to do it anyways it's all just what's apparently happening and yeah. it's so clear that that the me did not do this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I, I mean, I do have a lot less guilt than I used to have about things. I, I mean, I had, I made mistakes. I've had a lot of pets. I kind of grew up on a farm and I always had a lot of animals. I made so many mistakes with pets. And like, I really um, felt so guilty. And the last dogs I had, I tried to be a perfect pedal, perfect, do everything right. I mean, I couldn't but I tried my best and you know, then my dog got cancer anyway. I'd fed him like an all raw super diet and he got cancer at a very like nine years old. And I had plans. He's going to live to be 15, you know, and he got a kind of cancer that was like the worst kind. The vet said, it's just not, it's never curable. You can't. Mm. So it would, but it was like, I mean, I felt less guilt then, I guess, because I tried to do everything, but it may have been the wrong thing. I may have fed him something that gave him cancer. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. there was kind of knowing I did everything that I thought I could do, I guess. And I, I think sort of going through this whole process that is isn't a process, I guess, there is kind of like how the story has to kind of play out that like, you kind of have to do everything that you think you can do. Like maybe, I mean, there's things like you still think, oh, there's maybe this one other thing that someone says could, you know, I was listening to someone that does non-duality she's kind of new um talking about non-duality but from a biochemical standpoint and um so i was just listening to her yesterday because she sort of agreed i mean she says there's no me and all that stuff but thinks that it's kind of helpful to know that like biochemically this stuff is happening and but she did she talked about like that you can't make this happen or whatever but then she said that you kind of need to find a way to relax, like whatever that is, like you need to relax. But for this me, that's doing something. Like I need to relax and that's just effort. So it, it does seem like hearing this message, just hearing this message is has caused more, right, more relaxation than anything that I could do because they really can't do anything there really is nothing that just to think that there's nothing you can do is is somewhat of a relaxing message after it's you know not depressing so much but yeah the, the me can't help but take anything that's said to be an action for itself or something yeah like that. yeah so i get what you're saying um the other thing is though yeah saying that there is no free will there is no doership can be relaxing, but that can also be misinterpreted. And it often is yeah. to say that there's nothing you can do. Everything you do is, is the me doing it. That's a misinterpretation. Yeah. So it it's whatever is being, whatever is happening, whatever the body is doing or not doing, uh, um, it, it, even the misinterpretation is just yeah. what's happening. Yeah, it's happening already. It's already. Yeah. Yeah. So prior to the message that it was, it was already the case. That's just yeah. happening. Yeah. And, and yeah. The body was doing the body was thinking, uh, taking actions, resisting, being in fear, questioning, doubting, but that's all what was happening already. It was, yeah. all of that was still happening. And yeah. So it, it, it also continues here. All of that happening is just what's happening. Yeah. So yeah, there's been, 
like the last couple of weeks, just suddenly kind of, uh, I think I was, did a weekend with Andreas. Um, uh, well, no, no weekend. It was a full day, I guess. But um, I think there's something in the way he speaks that's kind of both depressing and, you know, because he really says there is not really, and I'm not, this is no hidden message. There's no hidden agenda for the me to drop away. There really isn't, you know, this is just as it is. So there is like the, feel, and uh, he, he mentioned something about the cause and effect that you, cause he was trying to explain, I guess, to someone. And he said, well, they were saying, you know, isn't there a correlation though, like between people that come and listen to this message of dropping away or whatever. And he said, well, you could say that you came to this message because you're already dying. You're already dying. You're dying. So that's why, you know, like seeing it that way, that it wasn't a cause. You don't know that. You have no idea. So like, yeah, that kind of just might have made it sort of click that that it's already just all happening. Yeah. That it, it kinda that's, isn't. that's kind of a really good point because, yeah. because people do ask me like, but you heard this message and it happened, yeah. but I, I, it's, it's like, it's pretty clear to no one that it was all just what was happening. The me did not cause this and did not, there's no one here knowing why or what happened or what caused this. And it's such a huge mystery. And yeah, there is no linear time. There's no progression. So, um, and, and the, the apparent mind that doesn't really exist, but the, it can't wrap its head around it. It can't know this. And it's so, it's so, um, the only thing it can do is live in time, no time. Yeah. So it's impossible. It's, it, this is, this is impossible. This is, this is utter freedom, unconditioned infinity. It's, it's not, it can't be comprehended and nothing can be said for sure. So. Yeah. And you try to explain, like I tried, my son is, my son kind of last the last year he's like 35 now but it's like not that young but he um he kind of gets the stuff kind of I mean he's he's interested but he's not not 100% interested but I was kind of just trying to explain to him what I meant by like no cause and effect but he was kind of trying to put it like I couldn't explain it I can't explain it I certainly can't explain it better than people that speak on this so like it kind of it just made it sound like a story and I did I said like in a way it's like I mean I tried to say like it's like a painting that's already finished or something but in a way or it's already done but in a way it's like no that's not really it either you know yeah, <laughs> that's not that's really a story too yeah yeah so he's like I don't see a painting there's no painting that's already done it's like okay <laughs> you're right <laughs> but you can't you kind of can't yeah yeah yeah, it it's um so you said something about you tried everything you could with your dog and he still got the cancer. You said something like so that's a that's a a, a belief or concept that that the character really thought if I try everything, um then I'll know. Or, or you could know, like, it was going to happen anyways. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, but if I didn't, right, because there were times in the past where I didn't do things right with animals. Like, I should have known. I definitely shouldn't have done this. and I shouldn't have done that. And that's like, there is a feeling that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't messed up, you know, there mm -hmm. was, you know, if I hadn't done something wrong. Yeah. yeah. So all of that is in the timeline of, of the person um, that really thought there would be a cause and effect, but then maybe yeah. saw that there wasn't really, it was just going to be what was happening, but that's all in the story. That's all a, an idea yeah. or a concept. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful, you know, it's, it's really intriguing and interesting, but I just wanted to clarify that that is an idea that the person can make a concept out of and see, uh, it, you know, the conclusion that this is already just what's appearing, but, but this yeah. 
obliterates everything. This is, it. nothing can be really said about it. It's just this, it's just this. And it's, um, it's so simple. It's so frustrating. Yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. Nothing yeah. more can really be said about it, except that it's, it's just this. Yeah. And as I try to understand just this and how is it so simple, that is like the big complication. It feels like that's a big complication, you know, it's like, you know, this has to stop happening to see that. Yeah. I mean, like I, you know, listen to Ariana and sometimes, and you know, she'll say, it's just the wall. It's just, you know, it's always saying that it's just talking and people say the screen and sitting and it's just like, but I can't see any of those things because I'm so busy with my thoughts. You know, I am so busy with my thoughts and feelings and trying to get that's, rid of them. That's and there it. Yeah, I think I've heard you say that. I mean, I, yeah, I, but you're funny. Yeah, you, you and she will say that, too. Yeah, that's it. Then that's it. But you still like you don't want to hear that. It's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> And, and the me can't help but uh, resist it or try to still figure it out or try to understand. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong or right with that either. Yeah. That's this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's no escaping this, you know, it's just this. It's already the case and it's you know, even saying it's been already the case is very misleading because that, that implies the past. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So nothing's going to happen because there's, there's already no me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know, like, yeah, the attempts to try to understand that are not gonna work <laughs> and even the attempt is is, is me yeah 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 and if I, even, yeah even me saying um because there's already no me is very misleading because there there can be a sense of a me and that's just this that's already wholeness perfection what is um somehow mysteriously having the sense of separation yeah like, completely illusory but it is this it is this yeah it can seem kind of i mean it can seem very cool that something like that can happen like some sort of a mirage that seems so real and like muji would call that god you know god is make it sound like it's a god's plan and he had it you know it's like don't i mean like that i know that it just makes it into a you know an idea it takes you away it. from it yeah it takes you away from yeah, it's it's it kind of like you kind of want to you kind of want to beautify somehow what you're seeing, like make it into something splendid and yeah. you know, like instead of just what it is taking away. Yeah. Because in a way, just what it is seems splendid enough, but then you they try to give it a well, it doesn't always seem splendid. It depends on the character. So when spiritual okay. teachers are sometimes talking. Obviously, I, I can't know for sure. I There's no one here knowing anything. So um, this is just an observation right now, I guess. But it seems like the character colors how it's expressed or what words are used or yeah. what concepts are valued, what concepts they think will encourage the seeker that's not really there. So it's very misinterpreting. Misinterpreted yeah. and um, it's misleading, but this this is also misleading. This speaker, any character is misleading. You can't yeah. hate that. Um, so I'm not saying that they're better or worse because yeah. this character is doing the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's all part of the play. Yeah, the concept too. I know. Yeah, the play. Like, yeah, it does. It, but, but yeah, they seem to. Cause yeah, you can't help it. I guess, but. Yeah, they they do want to, it seems like they want the positive, they prefer yeah. the positive, and that's a preference here too. But yeah. there's also there's also a preference here to be as clear as possible to say that this is not positive or negative, it's just what is. Yeah. The neutrality, even even neutrality is just, you know, a, it has a it has a taint of a trait. But for the for yeah. 
I can't use, I just have to use words. So, but the neutrality of just this, you know, it can sometimes shatter the positive and negative qualities of saying this is God's play or this is yeah. um, a sick cosmic joke. You know, that's like the negative and then, and then. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. There is like, yeah, I was listening to another one of Muji's sort of, I don't know what you call him. I mean, he calls him Muji his master. He's in India and I was listening like weekly kind of, I was, I was living in Ireland. I was isolated and I had no, like I was isolated for like two years. <laughs> and I, so there was like a weekly kind of, but like, and a lot of things that they do say are, very similar to this like he'd say there's no ananta sitting here i can assure you there's nobody here and what's here is the same as there and you know so many things that are saying that muji would do there's only emptiness there's only you know and i would hear those things and that would be like oh yeah yeah but then they'd say like he's talking about the coronavirus and someone's family had died and you know there there were people that you know, he would say, he'd be, you know, sympathetic, but he'd say, but you st I still feel like this is all grace, you know, that somehow this is happening for a good reason, like that there is something that God is, you know, kind of go from saying there's nothing. And sometimes he'd say, if you're not God, then there is no God, things like that, you know, sometimes things that are very like, okay, that's what you mean, you know, that he doesn't actually mean there's a God in the sky, but then sometimes very dualistic saying, Yes. One who lost her mother that didn't have a good relationship with her mother died suddenly with COVID. And, you know, she was, he was saying, well, I feel her here now. Like I feel her presence and she's, I can tell she loves you. And that just seemed like, okay, that's not flying here. You know, <laughs> I'm, I just, just, that doesn't, you know, I don't know. The, just, that is, that is just, um, yeah. An expression of the character and yeah. it, it's just misleading for the spiritual seeker. But um, since everything is misleading, it doesn't, it's yeah. not wrong. But um, the, also here, if if someone is sick, there can be a saying of, I'm sending you love. Yeah. The character always said that. And yeah, there is, a, there is compassion for, it's not anyone's, but like, there's a preference for others not to be in pain or not to suffer. Yeah. So there can be, certain things that are said that are very misleading yeah sounds as yeah. like like i was talking to someone where the uh, me apparently wasn't there um but his his mother had passed and he was in a lot of pain there's no one there in pain but there was immense pain yeah and i said she she's resting now she yeah is not um she's at peace so yeah, like I said that is very dualistic. That is, very yeah, misleading. right. I know words were said in some sense, like there's something like, as a like pure, like there's something about it that seems true, though, like without being true, you know. I mean, I don't know, without being somehow it seems true, like not like there's, she's there resting, but yeah. yeah, there can be relative um meaning and beauty um in all of those things yeah and um i guess i guess it's just it's part of this dualistic story and play and um it's so colorful yeah it's so, so my daughter just lost her dog uh, one of her dogs she has two dogs she's my daughter's like halfway through pregnancy her first and um her dog just suddenly kind of, she's had two dogs that have had cancer and last like lasted way longer than any vets thought and she has one that's had it for two years and is still here so dog suddenly started failing and she thought okay i'm gonna get ready if it's cancer and treat it but they took her to the vet and the vet said, you need to take her to the vet school. And by the time that she was there, they said, kind of, you need to come say goodbye. <laughs> and there was a sense like, I mean, I've known this dog. She was like 12 years old. We rescued her when she, you know, they, my daughter had first gotten married. So they've had her a very long time. They're very doting dog parents. And um, 
like when she died, it's just kind of like, I felt bad. I felt bad, but I also felt like I'm not supposed to feel bad. Like there's nobody here to feel bad. There's no daughter. There was never a dog, you know, <laughs> kind of like, I don't like, I can't do it. Like, like, what do I do now? There's <laughs> kind of, you know, there's no me, there's no daughter, there's no dog. There never was. And I wrote to Emerson who I've had a couple meetings, like when, yeah, with me, with Emerson have gone to talk. talk Cause I know he has a dog. He always brings up at, at 16 years old. And, um, but I just said, you know, like, cause somehow I feel like, cause it's always interpreted. This is just a dream. And when you wake up, you realize it's not real, but there's like in that time, like you want to feel like there was something special there. So he wrote me, I don't remember what he said, but it was very nice. You know, it was like, yeah, it, it is a dream, but it feels real. And that's the point. And he said, like, he said, this character, Emerson, just cried, I think, because, you know, reading about the dog, but I kind of gave a background of, you know, what happened. And, and so, yeah, there is kind of just a feeling like it shouldn't be special, because it's not even real. But somehow, um, I don't know. And then I guess it gave sort of permission in a way to see it as a very, kind of very special story. And to have you know, the dog died, but there is no feeling like, there's no feeling like she shouldn't have had cancer. Cancer was evil or wrong. It's what happened and the way it was part of her. It was part of, you know, um, I don't know. It, it just, yeah, I'm not sure why I'm bringing up that, but just, yeah. But there did, it does, yeah, it doesn't have to say the story is, I mean, even, yeah, it, in, in a way it's a bad thing, but in a way it's not, it's kind of a, beautiful thing it's kind Absolutely. of and, and it's funny also because like with a dog you don't think oh they got cancer they did something wrong you might think you did something wrong I think but like yeah the thought that like if how it's different like if I get cancer it's my own fault like it's you don't think but I'm just a dog I'm just you know I'm just there's no blame I mean I don't know yeah it's just yeah. Something that so if, if I can if I can describe what it what it's like, because I guess um, everything's so in more, more immediate than immediate. Um, okay. So it's, it's more like if, if something happens and there's apparent grief, uh, there's immense heartbreak and yeah, crying, a lot of crying can happen. And, and, you know, this is just a description of this character. Yeah. But, so there, and there can't even be resistance to that pain and heartbreak. Yeah. Um, so everything still apparently arises and, um, it's not, it's not really interpreted as special or not special. It's just what it is. So whatever is happening, however, a reaction appears, whether, so the, so the, um, apparent reaction there was this, this isn't really real anyways. And, and that's just what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so it, it's not, it's not really that you have to neglect or, or think that it's not special because it's, uh, it's both and neither. Yeah. 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 But yeah, to say that it's not special tends to sort of go down the other way. Like, like it's, it becomes negative. It doesn't become just neutral like it becomes a bad sort of bad like <laughs> you know yeah 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 i guess some people say that either everything's special or nothing special i don't know. <laughs> i don't know yeah yeah i i think i would kind of say that too yeah it's just an evenness to all of it yeah um even even if there's pain and heartbreak there can be a preference for not having that. And even that has an evenness. Oh, yeah. The resistance also has an evenness. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because sometimes the me can apparently drop. And since someone can be in immense pain, because when, when you see speakers, I would say that they're relatively in a good place 
the person seems like in a good place to express right. like this. Yeah. You're most, most people aren't really seeing, this is all a story, but most people aren't seeing the full, how, how it could look, the fullness of it, the, the, the variety of it. This, this is, there can be immense pain and there can be a not even wanting to share this. There can be just wanting to, um, just deal with the pain somehow yeah um, yeah so yeah because we only see people that are able to speak <laughs> they don't come on crying generally <laughs> or <laughs> yeah yeah so this can look so many different ways and yeah um even if someone's not really in pain they just don't have any desire or interest in sharing yeah um, yeah, it does seem like a small, this is, I don't know, I don't know, obviously, there's no knowing of anything, but it seems like a small percentage that speak about it. Yeah, like yeah, fraction, you know, yeah, I don't know, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. So how long ago, if, I don't know, how long ago was it that you felt like this kind of, yeah. yeah, okay, I'm gonna use the wrong words, you know what I'm saying, I don't think, I don't have to finish. <laughs> right. um, so like mid December, I would say it got quite clear. Okay. Um, so yeah, you, you felt the urge to kind of speak about it pretty soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, I spoke about it mid January. Okay. So it was, I guess relatively early on. Uh, and the thing is, the character was expressing anyways. She she was in solitude so she expressed on camera she expressed in audio um it was already there in a way so the sharing just happened um i guess you could say naturally yeah so do you okay I, um feel like i don't know people will say there's no process but then again say that things still continue to drop away like like after the original kind of sort of dropping that things continue to kind of have drop that didn't drop so yeah i don't know yeah 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 so the apparent journey um this apparent timeline i mean it seemed to be so illusory um yeah. this apparent progression or this even the body aging um that appears, it still appears. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the apparent refinement of the character, um, certain maybe dropping away of some conditioning, you can, you can label that as refinement and stuff, or the expression yeah. can become more clear maybe, but um, yeah, it's all just what is all of that and there's yeah. no real meaning or value to it it's like because the expression at least for here is coming from like a joy uh there's not there's not a reason for it there's there's no point in it um if if clarity seems to develop that's just what is um yeah, there's no there's no real importance to it, I guess. It's just yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And and some characters don't they can not refine. They can have no interest in growing or learning. They can have no interest in refining their conditioning. They can yeah. be very comfortable with what is. Is it the character? I mean, it seems like the character that does the character can't really do the refine I mean it, I guess that's just what happened is what's happening whether or not the character is refining or not like yeah. yeah I guess I'm just referring to the character has certain conditioning which is is all of this that I'm describing is emptiness charactering emptiness conditioning <laughs> it's yeah. all simultaneously nothing happening yeah um uh, nothing vibrant did that make sense to you before you kind of like until it made sense? 
Like, yeah, because that kind of doesn't really, I mean, I, I guess I'm just trying to understand it, like, you know, how that, maybe there is something that kind of understands it, but certainly not my thoughts. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. um, there's, there seems to be this clarity that seems to happen. Yeah, it's not a visual seeing, it's not a mental understanding. It's, um, I have no idea what it is, but maybe if I try to describe it, it's like a energetic sense that everything is nothing appearing as a building and trees simultaneously, but that tree is, is nothing, it's empty. And it's not a mental understanding you can't so there, understand. yeah sometimes it's like sometimes you're wondering is this just like a brain thing you know like you know just like that something like suddenly things don't seem real is it like i mean it kind of seems like i don't know like yeah. um i mean it seems yeah i have no idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> Maybe it could be it, it could be there could be a partial brain change but i seems it doesn't seem like that's it yeah um, so like, I, I think like chemicals probably change at, you can't tell which happens first maybe i don't know yeah. i did read like ramana maharshi used to like even as a kid like he had weird sleep like um like he would sleep so soundly that people like kids would beat him up in his sleep like I mean, strange thing, like, like he could be beat up and not wake up. Like there's already something, you know, going on there. It seems like that was different, but I don't know. Stories. <laughs> Fascinating. I don't know if it has anything to do with this, but. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's, um, it's misleading. I would say everything is real and unreal and it's hard for the the apparent mind to wrap its head around that because it will try to interpret that yeah um so everything is solid i you know i i see exactly what everyone is seeing but yeah. it's so it's so unreal and yet it's still appearing the same as before. It's still solid. Um, there were times like that I had brief, other than just at that retreat, but a couple of like times that there seemed to be a shift, I don't know, into something very like not long live, but during the time things didn't, they look different. Like I see the light on the building and it would just look like, beautiful or like the you know even garbage or things next to the road just like wow <laughs> that's kind of like you know and i don't know if during the time there was like grasping but as soon as it's kind of stopped it's like no i want that again everything was like beautiful like things i never would have seen on the side of a building you know <laughs> Uh -huh. I was taking pictures of stuff that's like, oh, and it's just like cigarette butts or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't know. It just seemed um, the the glimpses. At least what was. It's so different. Who even knows exactly what a glimpse is? But it seemed here that the glimpses were a bit different from this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they some like Tony Parson said a glimpse is like the worst thing that can happen to you. Like, because you go right, but it does seem like most people have a glimpse and then go chasing that. Yeah. Really chase that. And intensify. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the glimpses is such a, um, so maybe maybe it could be it could also be a sense of an altered state, which is part yeah. of the sense. Yeah. Or it could actually be a, a 
a seeming dissolving or um, a sense without the me. Um, yeah. Sometimes people talk about things shimmer, shimmering, like, um, you know, mm -hmm. like everything sort of shimmering. And it was kind of, I don't know if I would, I don't know if I could say that. I don't know. But yeah. Did things seem more illuminated and more uh -huh. vibrant? And it yes. could be it could be a bit more intense like that because of the contrast. Yeah, yeah. Then without, which I can maybe compare that to when this this happening that never happened in the beginning of it. Maybe it was a bit more vibrant and wow. Yeah, the contrast. Okay, but it does seem now that it's so ordinary. It's it's there is a subtle wow, but it's it so doesn't mean it it went back to dull though. Like it didn't go back to sort of like, eh. <laughs> there, there was actually a time where it, it felt really bad. It felt oh. like a void. Oh. Um, it's hard to say because I do think it's just a report from this apparent body, whatever's going on here, I don't know. But now yeah. it does seem like a very even neutral, everything is equal. There's nothing that has more importance or less importance, even if there's a preference here for not no pain. It's just like an evenness to everything. So even pain seems even, like even. In, in a way you can say yeah. there's just a lightness to the intense pain. <laughs> okay, yeah. Even, okay. even to the intense resistance to the pain, there's a lightness to it. Yeah. It seems. Yeah. Well, who knows? If if it goes on for months, there might be less lightness. Um, <laughs> yeah. There so sometimes I I talk to someone without the sense of me and they're suffering. They're they're in so much pain that they would say they're suffering. Oh. There's no one there suffering, but they're suffering. The body is in that yeah. way pain they're suffering but no one's suffering yeah yeah that was a little shocking to me because a lot of spiritual teachers or whatever might say that this is the end of suffering yeah 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 and when ramana was dying of very painful bone cancer like i guess in his sleep he would bone and and the people you know his attendants were like oh, why are you moaning if you're not in pain and he said oh the body still feels but that's not me, you know, it's not, mm. I don't experience that. I mean, I don't, I don't think there is exact words, but it does seem like there was a detachment, like that there was no sense of him experiencing it, that he was experiencing it. So I don't know. That, not, not detachment, but there just wasn't anyone there. Yeah, yeah, I think, oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. So, yeah, I think sometimes, yeah, listening, I think, to you and, you know, anybody that kind of says that if it is, you know, if whatever is happening, you know, if there's a me or whatever that's still resisting everything, that is what's happening. Like an acceptance for that is, and that it may never fall away. It may never happen. And that that is, you know, at, at times that feels okay, fine. That's what most of humanity is going through. <laughs> most of most everybody doesn't fall away. So, I mean, it does sound preferable. It definitely sounds preferable to be in a state where there's less identification with with person, but it might not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hear like Tim Kliss was someone. He said something like he would never want to choose to go back to living as you know a me I guess it wouldn't be it's not like it's equal there is a you know a preference there is a preference to not you know live in anxiety and everything every day but the one thing one thing that the I guess like there there is to, there is a temptation to still like oh maybe I should try that when the lady was talking about the biochemistry and that you sh you know you she said like it's not gonna happen like the shift isn't gonna happen if there's like all kinds of anxiety like if you don't if you if you're in a very anxious state or you're that's how you're living it's not gonna happen because you don't 
you know, it's just not. And so like that you kind of need to find a way to relax. It's like, there's part of me like, screw you. I've been trying for, you know, I like 60 years old. So basically 60 years to relax, you know, before I was even on this path. And it's just, you know, I don't know. That isn't really what I heard anybody else say that it doesn't matter. Like most people say it has no relationship to whether you're anxious or what's going on. Like, I don't know, but yeah, the temptation to still think you there's something you need to do, do may not be completely dead. Yet. <laughs> yeah. I would not agree with that. Yeah. I would, I would never say that. Um, yeah. There's no way to know for sure. Even if it's, it's more likely if the body is more relaxed or there isn't this anxiousness, um, is it more possible? I have no idea. Um, but you do hear about people that did get some terrible diagnosis or they had a family member die or that that seems to trigger a shift for, I don't know about, you know, most people, but you'd hear about it. You certainly hear about like, oh. Robert Tolle and Byron Katie. Um, yeah. Maybe. Right. Yeah. They were in despair. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um also this can't be said for sure but it does seem like um for whatever reason there's this there's this giving up of there's this giving up that happens at least yeah. that that's what happened it seemed like it happened here but and i i hear other teachers saying that like adi ashanti said he, there was a giving up and he right. He continued with life and gave up on enlightenment because he knew he can't make this happen. So he yeah. got a job with his dad and he got married or whatever. I don't know if that was the reason, but like he continued with life. He stopped. Yeah. Trying. I heard that the moment that it happened, I think he was in a meditation tent, but he, so he, but he was, I think he wasn't really taking it very seriously. Like he wasn't thinking oh, this is going to happen or whatever. But um, the, I think his final scene, though, again, I don't even know what's yeah. happening there, but just for entertainment, um, when it finally happened for him, he was just walking across his living room. He was not meditating. Oh, I thought it would. Yeah, he said something about he heard a bird and he realized something how the bird was not. So, somehow it wasn't it clicked that it wasn't different than. Mm -hmm inside whatever but yeah toilet yeah so yeah huh. and, and also like lisa karen's also said that uh she she separated from her teacher who was also her boyfriend and yeah. there was this sense of giving up that the me didn't do yeah but the me really never does anything but she was just aware that it was the me not doing it i guess yeah. Yeah. so uh, yeah, I think Theo, I, I'm sure you heard Theo also, but yeah, it was he had like tried everything. Usually like when I listen to a young speaker, I'm like, oh, you're only, you know, what, what, 26 maybe or something. And you're like, but it is when I, I listened to his story, like he started at like 13 and all the stuff he tried, like so intense trying, like, no, that sounds like hell he went through for 13 years. That's seems a long apparent time to be suffering and then he basically sounds like he kind of gave up and he was listening to tony parsons but just listening for like two weeks and then it just kind of yeah kind of dropped or or you know he, he, whatever happened happened but yeah it's a, a sense of just kind of giving up <laughs> yeah and then there is kind of a sense here that like Oh, well, that's kind of happening because I am giving up. But then there's a sense that, it, like, you know, is there a sense that's really still trying? But no, I know it still could never. I, I'm not thinking, oh, this is going to happen to me because there is a little bit like, oh, you know. <laughs> yeah. But then there's like, no, I don't know that. So I don't know. Exactly. So when I read that thing about Adi Ashanti, there, the me tried to be like, oh yeah, I'm giving up, but it ne it didn't happen. So yeah, it'll it'll happen or not happen. Yeah, you know, it's not predictable. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. There is there is more feeling like, yeah, it's okay. I've made it this far without it happening. So you know, 
yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 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 and it does in a way yeah it does seem like it there really hasn't been i'm 60 years old but it doesn't seem like there's been 60 years it's like the same it's the same yeah mm -hmm. i used to think you know when i was young and afraid of death that when i get to be old i won't be because i will have been like you know i would have had a life to that i've already lived but no it's still the same it's the same it's the same uh, apparently, yeah, it is annoying with this message. You feel like you have to say apparently. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I feel like I kind of ran out of things to say, though, but I don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, that's usually when when it ends, like it does. Yeah. It does just come to a point that it's just like there is really nothing that can be done. Um, not that doing stops it's, it's just that the me can't make it happen and it's just yeah it is. yeah 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 and the me me feels tired of trying <laughs> so <laughs> many so for so long you know through therapy and yeah therapy yeah that was another thing that yeah i i don't i don't know if you you mentioned did you mention like going to therapy or, or I never you're not recommending therapy? I think you said therapy can happen, but yeah, like, yeah. There, yeah, there's nothing right or wrong with it. It won't get you to this. Yeah. And I feel like it never really, well, I think the only thing I had a therapist that what I would have considered good, but I talked the whole time myself, <laughs> but I kind of feel like the thing therapy did was kind of show me that it can't really help in a way, you know, after trying the most, putting it out. It's totally oh for God. the person. So it can burden the person or it can help the person. There's no saying, but it has nothing to do with this. Yeah. It may have helped to just not have to try so hard or to feel that the person wasn't as bad as she thought. Like it was normal to, I mean, I was thinking through divorces and like thinking oh i shouldn't i'm terrible and thinking yeah, yeah. If it's what you want do it <laughs> that's what yeah so there's nothing yeah. right or wrong yeah. with it it just has yeah. nothing really to do with this yeah i guess there is like so there's a guy scott killaby that kind of i guess he kind of says that you have to deal with your trauma and you have to deal with all that stuff before this can happen you know it's like, jesus so let it not happen <laughs> <laughs> like, but but there's a preference here to say that working on trauma, if there's pain before or after, it doesn't matter. There's a preference yeah. in this character to say it, it could be a good thing just to minimize the pain and suffering to look at that stuff or to try to heal that stuff. But that has nothing to do with already just this. Yeah. So there's yeah. a strong preference here because this character also did a lot of trauma work, energy oh. healing. And it helped the character, it helped the person, or it energetically it released suppressed stuff, apparently. So there is there is a um less of a less potential for this body to be triggered, it seems. It still it still can be triggered. And it's not right or wrong, but there's this sense like the pain and suffering that can arise here is minimized because the the character or the conditioning was seen. Um, I, I'm not sure how to say this because, you know, the character did like really want to love herself and really wanted to forgive herself and others and wanted to express her anger that was always suppressed and expressed immense amount of tears and crying that was suppressed and you know did a lot of writing and uh accepting herself for who she is and but that's all in the story the in the story the character when she was relatively younger had hated herself and judged herself so critically and had such low self-esteem and had social anxiety and uh you know had eating disorders and had toxic relationships and horrible experiences so in the story there was tremendous suffering yeah in the story 
there was trying to mend that and release yeah. some stuff. Um, yeah. So if the character kind of wanted to do it though, like the character, the character, yeah, like this character is like no more. <laughs> the character doesn't want to do it. And it seems like a. Mm -hmm. a yeah. It, it was just a belief. Well, there was just so such intense suffering that she felt like she had no option but to do something because yeah. she was suicidal sometimes and yeah. there, there was no other option, it seemed. Yeah. So it wasn't even her choice, it seemed. It was just like, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so you found a way to do it without a therapist, like you found. I, I never thought therapy would help me for some reason. I think you were right. <laughs> you were right. Like, because I, yeah, it seems like this, if there is in the story going to be a better way to train therapists, I don't know. That doesn't seem like it's very, um, nothing it's very really consistent. It's just for the person. It's, it's the person reflecting on itself. It's in the story. It's, um, but it, it it's not it's not freedom it is part of freedom freedom is expressing in that way appearing in that way but it has nothing to do with just this um but really yeah. there's nothing right or wrong with it because it can sometimes really apparently help people sometimes i'm not yeah. sure i'm not an expert yeah. in therapy so yeah but people have said that it doesn't really work but I don't know. I don't want to say anything for sure. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I just have never seen it. Like sometimes it seems to work like with some people feel better temporarily, but it doesn't seem like it's like lot. changes seem persistent. But, you know, I don't. There's there's this um, maybe belief here. So it's part of the character. It doesn't mean anything. There's a belief here that there can be energetic shifts or releases because trauma is just energy in the body, it's trapped. There's um, just a, a so-called memory, not just here, but like bodily. Um, so there's, there's this belief that maybe energetically there can be a shift. Um, Cause the teacher I had was energetically, like she did, it seemed like it was a mix of therapy, like working on the conceptual person sometimes, but it was more um, feeling the feelings, allowing what is. Um, obviously the person would be allowing. So this is all in the yeah. person, but um, it seems more like re reconditioning yourself because when you're a child, society and parents and all these influences innocently because all, that's all they know innocently help you suppress things help you act a certain way help you be a certain identity and an image um so there's a lot there it seems like um a little cage in in some sense sometimes yeah, yeah. so i think for the so I think for four or five years, I was trying to allow feelings, like allow. Um, and I think sometimes like Muji and Muji's kind of like didn't really speak directly about how to do something, um, but kind of to sit with a feeling, like to stay kind of, and he'd talk about sort of like make it sound like it's burning away. It's sort of like you're burning away the conditioning but it felt like it never seemed to burn away. Like it just got more intense. <laughs> like, like, I don't know if I would, I was kind of, I don't know if it actually, I, it didn't seem like, you know, that it, it was like, you know, you need to accept it more somehow, but <laughs> like, yeah, there's another one, Nargis or Nargis or whatever that kind of is, makes it sound like you have to do something that you have to, you know, that you have to change your energy or you have to be with feelings but I mean staying with feelings for five years I don't know yeah whether you're just intensifying or you know I don't know yeah and that yeah another that biochemical lady was talking about like yeah healing trauma 
but she was talking about like when you're a newborn, like you, you pick up whatever your mother was feeling and you mirror kind of that. And so, yeah, I have a feeling my mother was under stress when I was born. My father started drinking heavily. And so I probably did pick up that, but how you bring that up in therapy, like, I don't, I mean, that's just a story too. I don't know what happened. I might've been dropped on my head and batted around. I'd have no idea what happened to me. Like, I have no idea to like, how are you going to deal with that? I don't know. Yeah. And I have talked about trauma, you know, talked about all the possible things that could have happened to me as a child, you know, and how did that affect me and my relationship with my sister and all. And, you know, thinking you're venting it all and now what's supposed to happen like I don't know it just felt like nothing ever really like okay so what now <laughs> yeah. yeah it's yeah. pretty it's pretty clear here that this apparent dropping can happen whenever and there can be still a lot of trauma and not much not you know you're not healed the person's not healed and it happens so there's really, you can't say anything for sure. Like I, I understand certain people will say you, you have to exhaust the seeking energy or you have to look at, look at what your subconscious is hiding or yeah. running away from or, so you can say all of that and all of that, there's a preference here to do that anyways, regardless, because that will still be there if the happening never happens. I, I can't say anything for sure, but it seems like yeah. conditioning doesn't change drastically. It can, but who knows? Yeah. So there's a preference here that that kind of stuff could still be good. That, that seems like it doesn't have anything to do with the mysterious illusory falling away that has no cause. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I would put it right now. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it does. It just seems it does seem like it. If it's really seen that it is just kind of a story that's happening to no one. <laughs> that does seem like it would be preferable, you know, to not be somehow identified. It's just a story that I don't know. Yeah, yeah I. I I, I would also say like, you know, a lot of the speakers would say, yeah, they wouldn't go back. Um, but again, sometimes when there's a lot of pain too, the me, it can be a good thing in a sense because it will, it will minimize the pain. It will kind of suppress certain things. So it's not so much, it will contain certain things. It will, uh maybe even be a spiritual person who's like working on the trauma but at least the one person i see right now is um the pain is just so immense and there's no filter at all so there's no safeguarding anything because it's just what it is and so i can't even say the dropping of the knee is a good thing wow. so i can't like physical say pain like physical pain yeah. immense emotional pain that's oh. based on trauma oh wow yeah huh yeah. so who knows if the processing is is quote-unquote faster because there's no identification really with it there's still a lightness to the immense pain but who knows that can last an apparent lifetime until the body dies like I don't know yeah um but I, I I also want to express that that's also a possibility that this is not sunshine and rainbows the speakers might unintentionally portray that sometimes yeah that's just because they're the ones apparently speaking about this yeah I guess that's true yeah yeah. yeah, listening to like, I guess Theo right after his transformation, like he seems so like just ah, happy, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it may not continue that way. So coming out that way. And uh, 
yeah, like Ariana's first videos were like looking at the world like this, like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was kind of here too, a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It does look like, it does look like a better state from here. And it's, I know. It's sharing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to stop recording now. Okay.